Okay, this is how I do my normal workflow for importing pictures and processing them. I mean, this is just the basics of what pretty much I do with every photo. So that's what I'm going to walk you through. First of all, I use the software here, Photo Mechanic, to do the ingest. I, you can either come up here and uh, come under File and do Ingest here, which is also a, good, a command. So I'll open that up. You select your say your disk over here you decide where it's going to go I always have it um, and then once you've done that and selected that I'm incremental ingest all the new photos just in case I accidentally put the card in there twice I have checked over here apply IPTC pad to photos with this embeds all the text in each photo so I have caption normally done some different fields here and the cool thing with this is you can have a whole list of different kind of um, of these saved up. So I have them for all different things and projects I've done in the past. Um, so, you know, I have my standard. Uh, there's an associated press standard and how that would look. And so that gives you a good idea of what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, you have image rights, which puts your copyright where you want it. Um, let's see. Uh, let me see what else I have here. We have different ones that I've pulled in. And um, so this is just really cool the way this works. It was, um, allows you to basically, uh, by pulling one of these in here, for example, you, you get all the copyright and everything as you want it. Down here you have a section for model releases and whether or not they've been model released and putting their age in. You can actually put in their age over 25. Then you can put uh, other material with this like is uh, your information, the status of a picture if you want to take something in or out. But anyway, these are all different ways you can put text within a picture. Once I've done that, I'm also renaming all the pictures, basically using the camera data that was recorded when the camera was fired. So as long as your date and time are set correctly, it'll record the exact same time you shot it and give you a unique name. A lot better than image one through whatever, because the next time you do an import, you'd end up with image one through whatever. So this makes every, you know, you're not going to be able to import the same time every, because every time you take a picture it's a unique time gives it a unique name automatically it unmounts the source disk after ingest that's clicked right down here as you can see and that's pretty much it ignore all and copy all the photos in the same de de uh, air destination that's what I'm trying to do and directly in the primary and secondary folder so and you can actually do a secondary if you want to put it in two different places at one time so once I do that and hit the ingest which I've already done earlier they pop up and look like this. All the pictures are here and you can slide and see if you want to see a few at a time or a bunch. I have it kind of set for this as default. <laughs> the next thing I do is I can click on each picture and look at it larger if I choose and if I do, whoops, I pulled this over my other screen. It basically lets you look at the picture pretty big and you can decide if you like it or not. And here's where I check tag it with a by clicking down there or you can hit the letter T and it removes or puts it back in. Now after you go through your photos and you select which ones you want, that's all I'm doing is I'm going through and go keeper or not. Then I come up here and it's all of them are being shown now and then I say show me all the untags which if they were here then I would select all of them with command A and then delete. But basically uh, since I've already done that you can see these are the pictures that I want to ingest the, that have already been ingested and I'm keeping these are all NEF files so they're in a raw folder as you see here in People's Fest raw once this has been done I've narrowed down this makes it much faster than when I use Lightroom Lightroom would take forever because of the way each picture when it comes up and you want to look at it for example I'll just show you how slow it is and here I'm trying to arrow through the pictures and watch when you click on it they're not sharp it takes a second for it to load see how long it takes now let me go back to the other program and this is why I do it because here look how long it takes it it's doing the exact same folder but the pictures are sharper faster that is why I use photo mechanic to ingest and not Lightroom Lightroom is just too slow <laughs> Once they're all in Lightroom, though, 
I come down to the bottom and select all the images by hitting Command A. Once I've done that, I then hit the letter D, which will bring me over to, let me bring that back up here, Develop Module. So you can click on Develop Module or hit D. And when that comes up, I then come over here to the far right to my um, controls for um, and come down to the bottom here, which is lens corrections. If it's if it's spun and you don't see anything underneath it, click the little triangle and then click on the word profile and click on enable profile corrections. Now these have already been done, so I'm going to unselect all these by hitting Command D. I'm just going to pick one image so you get an idea and I'm going to undo the enable see how the picture changed now watch this little line here on this uh, people's fest when I hit correct and you can see it straightens it just a little and that's the reason that the camera manufacturers each lens has got certain imperfections and the software is helping correct that for you if you shoot in JPEG mode, the camera's doing that for you, and there's no real reason to come back and do it again. But in RAW mode, nothing's done to the picture, so that's why you want to click on this when you shoot RAW. Once all the pictures have been done, and I've done that much, the only thing I'm doing now is going through each picture individually, and I'm going through and basically dealing, as you can see here, I've already brought over the highlights. Now, the highlights bring in the recovery up in the sky. Notice how the blue sky up here is getting just a little darker as I bring that in just a little. There, that's all I'm trying to do. The rest of the picture stays good. I also sometimes will bring the vibrance up between 25 and 35, which is right here. And vibrance uh, makes everything pop in the colors, but it doesn't affect people's skin tones, whereas saturation will do the whole picture. So once I've gotten the highlights and I have these little triangles up here uh, clicked here as you see um, white around and that lets me on this end uh, the blacks if they go real black blue shows up. So that's what this end is showing when blue shows up and there are a few little spots here from earlier. Over here on the white area the red will show up and I'll slide my highlights over and you can start to see well, right, barely in there you may see some, well, this picture doesn't have it. We'll have to look at another one here and bring in. Let me find one that may have some highlights to show you the white area behind, like here. Let's take this picture here, and as we slide the highlights over, the red pops up. So once, what I'm basically doing to give you an idea is I want most all my photos to have no red really in it unless it's a specular highlight which would be like a chrome piece on a bumper of a car maybe I would want to leave a little uh, red there and then the other thing sometimes not always I want to pull in the black and so I want some blue showing up as a basic idea and if you look down here in this corner you'll see some blue just barely show up and I don't need much but anyway that gives you an idea of what I'm doing to all the photos and that's pretty much it in terms of correcting them and everything else. The last step I do after I go through and maybe tweak individual photos with burning and dodging, but I'm not going to cover that here. I then do an export, go hit the letter E or go up to the top library, decide where I want to put them, and I always rename my folders what they are, and this will be JPEGs. The others were RAW. And when I get come down to the bottom, they're all coming out as JPEGs and sRGBs and quality 80. And pretty much they stay the same size they are and I hit export. And that's it. Oh, and if I want to, I can redo things for blog posts. I want them a different size, which when I do that, I just click this and my settings are already changed to 550 pixels. It resets it for the long edge. Whereas if I come over here and I want it to look for my I want to keep everything the exact same size and I just cropped a little just when I rotate it but I want all the images to be the same size then I also go back to the long edge which is the same as my D4 I have a little point and shoot uh, P7000 and occasionally I want to do something a little bit different with that and you can have settings there as well but that gives you pretty much you can save these and then you can just click on them so if you want to go to TIFF sometimes and JPEGs another time you don't have to go in and reset everything 
once you've exported them then I can come back if I need to in the photo mechanic um, and they look they just come up here and these are the ones that have been processed now by the um, software at Lightroom whereas if you look at the very beginning here if you'll notice these pictures like up in here the sky difference now just look at this over here you can see the little difference just clicking from one to the other the lens is distortion is corrected and the colors a little bit brighter and that's pretty much it well that gives you everything I do hope that helps you do a better job of ingesting your pictures getting them through the process thank you